If you're considering a move to Kansas City and you're watching this video, then chances are that you're considering moving to the second largest county in the entire metro area in Johnson County. And in this video, I'm gonna be discussing the pros and the cons of living in Johnson County. Stay tuned. Now, I grew up and kind of moved all over Johnson County throughout my childhood. I lived in Northern Overland Park for a while. I lived way down in Gardner for a while, which used to be way more rural than what it is today. And before I moved to Denver, I lived in Lenexa, which is actually where I'm located right now. And Lenexa, in my opinion, is kind of the geographic center of Johnson County. And a lot of people who are considering moving to Kansas City, they look into Johnson County and you may not know that all of these suburbs that you're researching are actually in the same county. Popular suburbs like Overland Park, which is constantly rated one of the best places to live, not only in the entire metro, but in the entire country is located here in Johnson County, as well as Lenexa, Olathe, Shawnee, Gardner, Mission Hills, Fairway, Westwood. All of these super popular, high rated suburbs throughout the Kansas City area are concentrated in this one county, which is the second largest county in the entire metro area. It spans over 400 square miles and is home to over 600,000 people. So it holds a little over a quarter of the population of the Kansas City Metro in this one county. Now, Johnson County itself has a couple of different vibes and I like to refer to them as north and south, but really if we break it down, it's inside the 435 loop and outside of the 435 loop. Everything inside of the 435 loop is what I would consider northern Johnson County. And that's where Northern Overland Park is located. So Overland Park is this 76 square mile city that spans the entire length of the county. And I've done a lot of videos on Overland Park. I oftentimes divide Overland Park into three different sections, Northern, Central, and Southern. And Southern is where a lot of the new development is taking place. And that's really true for inside of the 435 loop compared to outside, is the inside of the loop really is home to a lot more mature and established neighborhoods. There's not really as much new construction taking place. There is some commercial development taking place, but most of the new construction communities are really outside of the loop. And when you get outside of the loop, that's where things definitely feel a lot more suburban than they do inside of the loop. Because inside of that 435 loop, you have places like Prairie Village and North Leewood that border the Missouri side and kind of blend together pretty well with like the Brookside and Waldo areas. And if we haven't met yet, my name's Kyle. I'm a local realtor and I work with people just like you who are considering buying, selling, relocating, or investing here in Kansas City. So if you check any of those boxes, reach out. My team and I would love to help you. So let's go ahead and jump into the pros and the cons of living in Johnson County. And stick around until the very end of the video where I'm going to share with you a con that has actually come up with two separate clients of mine over the course of the past month. Pro number one the schools. Now, as a realtor, I'm not really allowed to steer you in any direction in regards to the schools, but the first thing that people mention when they reach out to me if they're considering moving to Johnson County is, hey, I recognize that the schools are highly rated in Johnson County. And I often refer to niche.com as a resource on my channel. And the fact of the matter is that Johnson County houses four of the top six school districts in the entire state of Kansas. So naturally, it's a big draw. And I think a lot of families, especially those who are making this huge huge transition in a cross country move, look at places like Johnson County because it's one less thing that you have to figure out because you can pretty much throw a dart at the county and anywhere you end up, you're gonna be in a good school district. Which leads me to the second pro about living in Johnson County. It's good for families. It's quiet, it's safe. You have places like the Shield Soccer Complex right in the middle of Overham Park that is a 96 acre site that has 12 synthetic turf lighted soccer fields that's always jam packed with kids playing soccer. It is the epitome of soccer mom living in Johnson County. And and that's a big reason why people move here. It's very focused on families and raising kids. And not to say that people who don't have kids look at living in Johnson County because they do. We've helped clients just like you who are relocating here that don't have kids that 
just want to live somewhere that's a little bit cleaner, a little bit quieter, a little bit nicer, where the houses are spread out and you get a little more square footage in a home compared to maybe on the Missouri side in Kansas City where the houses are older and a bit smaller. Then you also have a ton of great parks like this one that I'm in right now. It's Hidden Lake Park. It's right in the middle of Lenexa. It's got this little lake and a walking path behind it. And if you have a family and children of any age, well, it makes a lot of sense to live in a suburban area. I myself have kids and I live in the urban center in Kansas City. I absolutely love it, but I also understand the draw of living a place like this. As I was driving through the neighborhoods getting to this park, I saw tree houses and kids playing out in the street. So if that's what you're looking for and you have a family and you're considering moving to Kansas City, well then Johnson County should definitely be at the top of your list. Speaking of it being clean, it's really, really nice here in Johnson County. Again, living in Kansas City, and I frequent this side of the state line on a regular basis. My in-laws live over here. I have a lot of family that still live in Johnson County and we visit them quite frequently, but just crossing the state line and driving on the roads, it is a pretty night and day comparison compared to driving in Kansas City and avoiding potholes on every other road like I'm used to doing when I'm driving around town. And part of that is because the cities are a lot smaller. The biggest city in Johnson County is Overland Park. Again, it's 76 square miles compared to the city of Kansas City, which is 314 square miles. There's just a lot more infrastructure to maintain over there compared to over here. And as a result, you have nicer roads, you have cleaner streets, there's less trash and debris around. And that's because it's just less dense. There aren't as many people on top of each other as there are in the urban center. You can have a nice big yard with a privacy fence for the most part here in Johnson County. And that's something that you just don't really get on the Missouri side in Kansas City and neighborhoods like Waldo, Brookside, West Plaza, or Midtown, for example, because the lot sizes are a lot smaller. The houses are closer together. You don't really have the same kind of privacy that you can get here in the suburbs. And I think that's a big reason why a lot of people opt for living in Johnson County, and I would say another big pro of living here. Another pro of living in Johnson County is you have all these little cute downtown areas kind of spread throughout the suburbs. One of my favorites is North Overland Park where they have a really old historic downtown area and they have one of the best farmers markets in the entire country there. But then you also have these really new downtown areas like just west of here in the new downtown city center Lenexa where they have great amenities. They have a beautiful rec center with an indoor swimming pool and a lazy river. I've taken my kids there several times in the winter. And those are typically the hubs for each of these suburbs throughout Johnson County where they'll hold their art festivals. In the downtown city center, Lenexa, they hold the great Lenexa barbecue battle and they do like outdoor movie nights and things like that. So it is a place where you can really go and plug in and connect with the community, which I think is a big draw to people who are moving to places here in Johnson County. Another big pro of living in Johnson County is that you can get a newer home here. A lot of the new construction is taking place right here in Johnson County. A lot of that new construction is taking place on the outside of the 435 loop. So Western Lenexa is really getting built out right now. We actually did a full vlog tour where I toured a new construction community that you can watch right here. It's Watercrest Landing beautiful, beautiful homes. It's right across the street from Black Hoof Park, and it's a great place to live. And then you have Southern Overland Park, where 11,000 new home permits have been pulled in the last three years alone. And that is the bulk of new permits pulled in the entire metro area are taking place right here in Johnson County. Then you have Western Shawnee that's also really getting built out. I actually helped a client relocate to Western Shawnee just last year. So if you're looking for a new construction home and you like that newer, more contemporary, modern floor plan with all new everything and way less 
maintenance compared to a hundred year old home in Missouri, well then Johnson County will most likely have something for you. All right, so let's talk about some of the cons of living in Johnson County and piggybacking on everything being new, the development can be somewhat of a con living over here on the Kansas side and Joko. Take 69 Highway, for example, which is a mess right now because they're turning it into an expressway. So there are actually gonna be some toll roads in the middle of it, which makes a lot of sense because there's a lot of expansion going south of like 135th Street in Overland Park and Olathe. And you have to deal with a lot of that, right? So that is a big con to living in an area like that is you have to put up with a lot of these construction zones and stop and go traffic. I mean, 69, any time of day you're driving through there, they have a lot of it you know, narrowed down to just one lane traffic. So it can be a bit of a mess. And that comes with the territory of living in a newer area. So if that's something that you're after, you're more than likely prepared for that. But you also have less amenities. So the Blue Hawk development is an area in South Overland Park that is a new entertainment district that has like retail and restaurants and they're gonna have a big sports complex down there. And that's at 159th and 69 Highway, but there's really not much south of that as far as shopping goes. So if you live down at 179th out by the Overland Park Arboretum or Coventry Valley, one of those newer neighborhoods, you are gonna have a bit of a hike to get back to do any shopping whatsoever, whether that be groceries or you know clothes shopping or any entertainment because there's there's just really not much out there yet. And that'll probably change over the next 10 years. But right now, you're gonna be one of the first people getting in there. And another thing about living in a newer area, the houses do seem a little more cookie cutter. You usually have like, four or five different models in a neighborhood and all of the houses are really a variation of one of those four or five models maybe some different paint colors and some different finish options on the outside whereas on the missouri side when you're driving around brookside or waldo or the plaza any of those areas the houses are very unique and again that's something that's important to me so i would say that's definitely a con of living in johnson county is things can tend to look very much the same depending on where you live. Speaking of the development that's taking place in South Overland Park and things kind of not being as readily available, one thing that Johnson County is really lacking is public transportation. And I mean, there's really nothing. There are hardly any options for public transportation. You are gonna be very car reliant. We don't have any kind of light rail system or anything like that. I lived in Denver for 10 years. They have a light rail system that serves pretty much every suburb and you can get to a stop pretty easily. I think a lot of people who move to the suburbs, you're already kind of prepared for that, right? Unless you're moving from somewhere like the UK where you have a ton of public transportation options, you probably know that you're gonna be relying on your car. Even when I lived in Denver, the closest stop to my house in Littleton was like 15 minutes away and downtown was like 20. So unless I was going downtown to have like a really good time and maybe have a couple of drinks, I would just drive my car anyway. So while the public transportation transportation is lacking in Johnson County. I think if you're considering moving here, you probably already knew that. Another big con of living in Johnson County is the cost of living. It's the most expensive place to live in the entire metro area with an average sales price of 499,000 compared to just over on the Missouri side where the average sales price in Kansas City, Missouri is around 290. It's a pretty stark difference. Now, when I say that, I do help a lot of people who move to like Brookside where the median home price in Brookside is 500,000. It depends on where you're looking, but for the most part, things are just more expensive over here in Johnson County. The price per square foot here in Lenexa is $225 compared to the Kansas City side, which is $167 per square foot. Now, if you've enjoyed the video so far, go ahead and hit that like button so more people just like you can find the video if they're considering moving to Kansas City. Another con of living in Johnson County and living in the suburbs in general, and, and this is a big reason why I choose to live where I live, is a lack of things to do. When I say a lack of things to do, there are obviously places that you can go and get outdoors and go for a walk or a hike or a bike ride uh, in the suburbs. But if you wanna find the really good, 
restaurants, the unique experiences to living in Kansas City. If you wanna go to Union Station or you wanna go look at art, for the most part, you're gonna go to downtown Kansas City or the West Bottoms or Brookside or the Plaza or one of those areas. Whereas around here, it's more big box stores and chain restaurants. All right, so the last con of living in Johnson County, and, and the reason I bring this up is because I'm currently working with two clients that have presented me with the exact same scenario. One is selling a loft down in the crossroads and he's moving to Johnson County and another just moved here from out of state. And they're both looking for a unique condo or loft in Johnson County, which doesn't exist. Sure, you can find townhomes, you can even find a condo that may be a little unique, but compared to what you can get in like the river market or the crossroads or midtown or the plaza, it just doesn't even compare to what you can find over there. They just don't build that type of urban housing over here in the suburbs, which makes sense. Most of the properties and the residents over here are single family detached residents, apartments or townhomes. So if you're looking for a loft or you're looking for a high rise condo, and you wanna be somewhere that's like super walkable, well, more than likely you're not gonna find that here in Johnson County. So there you have it, the pros and the cons of living in Johnson County. I hope this video helped you. And if you have any questions, again, don't hesitate to reach out. And if you wanna know everything about living in one of these suburbs, then check out this next video here where I did a full tour of Overland Park and the neighborhoods and all the amenities. See you on the next video.